Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to have a talk series, and our agenda or the talk show series title is "Career and Job Scope for B Pharma Students in the Area of Pharmacovigilance." And today we have uh, Ma Dr. Manoj Swaminathan, who have joined us to speak about this topic. I'll just give a very brief introduction. Uh, Dr. Manoj Swaminathan, he is an MBBS with Master of Public Health and with more than 17 years of experience in the field of pharmacovigilance and public health. Currently working as a founder and a director of VGSERV Foundation. So uh, welcome to the show, uh, Mr. Manoj. I think we would start off with the Q&A. So uh, Mr. Manoj, I think our audience would like to understand what exactly is pharmacovigilance. Uh, so if you could just summarize it, it would be really helpful. Sure. So as you know that uh, every medicine, apart mm -hmm. from having some effect, it will also have some kind of a side effect. That mm -hmm. we generally say that the medicine which not does not have any side effect may not even have any effect. Mm -hmm. So pharmacovigilance with, deals with reporting and collecting adverse events or side effects. And uh, we have seen that uh, during the recent uh, COVID vaccine experience that people were talking about patient safety. Uh, will that vaccine cause side effects? So that is all related to pharmacovigilance. So it is uh, about uh, managing, uh, preventing the side effects with medicines and also collecting the data pertaining to the side effects of medicine. So that is about pharmacovigilance. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the inputs. And uh, Mr. Manoj, uh, what do you think, you know, uh, why a student should opt for pharmacovigilance uh, when he's doing in the, uh, his, you know, when he is doing B pharma? Why should he go in the direction of pharmacovigilance? Any thoughts about it? Sure. So first of all, uh, see, pharmacovigilance is all about safe medicines for public health. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, what ha happens typically is that this is a recession-proof industry where okay. as long as there are medicines, there are going to be side effects and there will be a lot of uh, job opportunities. And uh, you're talking about a country like India, where there are more than 50 to 75,000 people working in the field of pharmacovigilance, catering to companies, uh, almost say, I would even say the top 10 pharma companies globally also, the Indian companies cater to. And there are a mm -hmm. lot of opportunities, even if you look at the domestic data itself, uh, there are a lot of opportunity because we have almost 6,000 pharma companies in India. So mm -hmm. if somebody wants to remain in India, then again, there is a lot of scope. And uh, okay. as I told you that there are more than 50 to 75,000 people working. So there are a lot of job opportunities as well in India. Hmm. That, that's good to hear. I think that would be really insightful. Uh, and what, so I think once B Pharma students uh, decides to go into this industry of pharmacovigilance, uh, as a fresher, right, when they go and search for opportunity. What do you think uh, the companies or experts look forward in the student as a fresher in, in this area? And I mean, from the preference perspective. So what uh, the companies expect is that the fresher would know something about pharmacovigilance. So mm -hmm. at least something in the sense, mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's a course which is not taught extensively during the undergraduation base, right? So as a result, students may not know much about pharmacovigilance. So if they are able to tell something or they know the basics of pharmacovigilance, that will be very useful. Uh, because uh, what typically happens is there are, say, hundreds of CVs available with the recruiter and they need to shortlist a few. So if you have done some course in pharmacovigilance or you have some basic certification, it adds value. So the recruiter, during the initial screening itself, they can shortlist people who have done some basic courses because you can uh, onboard them very quickly. So that's an advantage. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And uh, as a B Pharma student beyond pharmacovigilance, are there a few more uh, options you would suggest where students can look forward for uh, as a career opportunity? Uh, so apart from clinical research, uh, clinical research is also there and you also have clinical data management. And now something which is evolving is data science. Mm, so right. uh, students can even consider becoming a data scientist. And healthcare, that is, uh, say, enormous data, right? So mm, if they can do something, they can learn something uh, 
like a python or something it will add lot of value and they can do uh, they can become a data scientist as well okay and uh, does that need a background for coding and stuff uh, if they have to or is it fine is it uh, something which anybody can learn uh, as a data right see nowadays you have school children learning coding so uh, i don't see that as a challenge so even if okay. somebody invest something like an hour a day they can easily mm-hmm. learn coding so i don't see that as a challenge okay perfect and uh, so uh, mr manoj what do you think you would give uh, our learners as an advice uh, when they are are in the b pharma so it could be pertaining to vocational course it could be pertaining to uh, courses beyond b pharma i mean if you could just detail that out for us that would be uh, really insightful for the audience sure see first of all uh, the student should know that any education does not go waste Uh, you, if they want to pursue a masters or you they want to pursue any certification nothing goes mm-hmm. waste so investing mm-hmm. time and money again it will add some or the other value so what i would mm-hmm. suggest is uh, student should know what they are doing and why they want to do so they should be able to answer that why so if, for mm-hmm. example if they want to enter into pharmacovigilance they should be able to answer this question why they want to get into pharmacovigilance Mm-hmm. so i have seen while conducting interviews i would ask a student uh, or a prospective employee why you want to get into pharmacovigilance and they would say because there are a lot of job openings or the salaries are yeah. decent but then <laughs> True. Uh, as an as a recruiter i don't like to hear such a answer that somebody mm-hmm. should say that yes i am passionate about patient safety public health then it is okay but then if mm-hmm. uh, somebody talks about salaries and more jobs then it doesn't make sense yeah no well, that that's correct i think in the, in the industry people want uh, what is the passion which is bringing into it rather than just the salary or the commercials right and uh, do we generally have uh, uh, kind of opportunities as in uh, in the industry as an intern for pharmacovigilance or is it a preferred approach in the industry to hire b pharma students who have done vocational course to be able to do internships so that they can get a better job certainly yes because what happens is that uh, the workload in pharmacovigilance is very unpredictable you saw the mm-hmm. recent covid experience that there oh, were yes. there were too many ad- side effects with the covid vaccines and right. the, the companies which were managing this data they did not have adequate resources hmm. and this is where uh, they started looking for interns or say 6 months contract or 2 months contract so mm-hmm. the student or the fresher also gets experience Mm-hmm. at the same time the company's work is also done so mm-hmm. that's an advantage so uh, uh, what i would feel is that yes there will be opportunities for interns and freshers for sure mm-hmm. okay uh, i think from the view of the students who are attending this right probably uh, if there is a view by 2025 how how do we see this uh, company or these roles growing in the industry um or or if you have any past uh, experience of how it has grown till now sure it would so this is an industry which is growing at the rate of 11 to 12% cagr which is enormous and over the period of next say 5 or 6 years it will be something like a 6 or 7 billion dollar industry which mm-hmm. is itself a big number and mm-hmm. uh, now uh, people are talking about artificial intelligence machine learning and also automation mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. the pharmacovigilance personnel will play a very important role in all those activities so okay. i just see it growing uh, it okay. seems to be an unstoppable industry ah okay okay that's good i think cagr of 11 to 12% i mean is a really good number if students want to pursue in the industry which is growing so rapidly i think that would be really helpful for them and uh, uh, from from uh, from the challenges perspective uh, mr manoj in the initial start of the career or you know um, for the students do they face any kind of challenges which they should be aware of um, or is it just like any other industry just initial hiccups and then they move uh, in the right direction so uh, what typically happens is pharmacovigilance is very it related industry or i would okay. say that uh, you need to be tech savvy to some extent uh, mm-hmm. and that will help because uh, if you are not very tech savvy and 
rarely used computers laptops or microsoft office then it might be slightly challenging because you only need to use it systems while working in the field of pharmacovigilance so that will be an mm. added advantage if somebody is slightly tech savvy or don't uh, the basics of pharmacovigilance or basics of computing mm-hmm. okay perfect yeah thank you very much manoj uh, that was really insightful for the students uh, thanks a lot uh, thanks for sparing some time to join us in the talk series okay wonderful thank sure. you thank you thanks bye okay.